Put God first. Your presence in their lives gives them validation. Our children don't need us to be superheroes. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. Men, stand up, be fathers. Welcome to the Inspired Legacy Podcast, Season 1, Episode 7. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark Henderson, your host and founder of the Inspired Legacy. With each and every episode, we strive to equip fathers to unleash their inner lion and discover their true purpose as spiritual leaders in the home. Okay, guys, you're in the safe zone now because nobody can see you. So go ahead and raise your hand if you are out of shape. Okay. That's good. I sense hands going up across the world. Guys, uh, especially married guys with kids, uh, we're all familiar with the term dad bod, right? Uh, I know I've been familiar with it, uh, and it is, uh, it's an epidemic. Let's just go ahead and say it. We are all, well, not all of us, but a lot of us, too many of us are out of shape. And when we try to get into shape, we do the typical man things, right? We hit the weights. We maybe we'll uh, buy some new running shoes and go for a run. Uh, I know CrossFit is really popular. So we try all of these things, right? The problem is if we are, uh, you know, seasoned like myself with a few years under our belt and a lot of us maybe have desk jobs, we, over the years, we literally seize up, we get tight. Uh, we don't have a movement and flexibility like we used to. And really, improper range of motion, you know, when we, when we dive into these exercise programs, you know, P90X is another one, when we just dive right in and we don't have the proper um, mobility that we need, uh, we're, not, we're not getting the full benefit of those exercises that we're trying to do. But more importantly, uh, due to that lack of uh, flexibility and range of motion, that can lead to some serious injuries as well. So... You might be asking yourself, why are we talking about exercise on a podcast to help dads be better spiritual leaders? Well, because, guys, letting yourself get out of shape is really one of the single worst things you can do as a dad. And I'm speaking from experience, so I feel comfortable saying that. It's not only destructive to you, but it impacts your relationship with your kids. Yeah, we end up, you know, when we let ourselves go, we end up lacking the energy that we need to fully engage in our kids' style of play, or to simply be that active leader that they need for healthy development. And, you know, throughout the Bible, God proves to us through his own character that he longs for us to be healthy and fit, you know, both inside and out. So when we take a look at this topic, you know, one of the keys to healthier living, like I've talked about earlier, is flexibility and movement. And, you know, ask just about any old person out there what their secret is, and they're probably going to say, just keep moving. And they're right. Uh, but to be, you know, to, to move properly, whether it's walking, uh, running, swimming, lifting weights, you name it, to move properly, we need to be flexible, again, and have that full range of motion in our bodies. And there's really no better way to focus on these very specific aspects of our health than incorporating yoga into our workouts. Well, my guest today is an expert in this topic. His name is Dean Pullman. He's a former Division I college athlete turned yoga instructor, and he's the founder of Manflow Yoga, an online resource for men of any fitness level. Dean and Manflow Yoga have been featured in Men's Health, as well as Muscle and Fitness Magazine. And whether you consider yourself to be in great shape already or acknowledge the fact that maybe you could drop some pounds off your classic dad bod, Dean has a program designed just for you. And, you know, outside of what my wife had told me about yoga and uh, the handful of yoga classes that I've attended with her in the past, I didn't know much about yoga heading into this interview. And as a result, I admittedly took us down a bit of a rabbit hole about the history of yoga, just because I, I kind of enjoy history. Um, but stay with us because we do eventually get 
I give Dean a chance to kind of dive into his his true realm of expertise, and we dive into a ton of useful and uh, practical information that I think you're all going to appreciate. And as one quick FYI, um, Dean did drop a couple swear words in this uh, phone call. I personally could care less, but at the end of the day, I do want this podcast to be one that you can feel comfortable listening to in front of your kids, whether you're in the car or at home. So I went ahead and bleeped them out. Not a big deal, but just kind of an FYI that when you hear that, don't be too alarmed. So kids, you're welcome. One more thing I'd love for you guys to do. We haven't done this before, but as you listen to this episode, if you're on your phone, take a screenshot of it on your phone as you're listening to it. Then post that to your Instagram story and tag Dean. He is at Manflow Yoga on Instagram. Go ahead and post that to your story, tag him, and tell him what you loved about this show. He would love to see that, I know, and this will this tactic will really help you know, spread the word about this episode with his own audience. Okay, so with that, go ahead and get your yoga mats out. Here's my conversation with Dean Pullman of Man Flow Yoga. Dean Pullman, how are you, sir? Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm doing well. I'm really excited about this episode, uh, more so than usual, and I think it's just because I don't know a lot about yoga. Even though my wife is really big into it, I've kind of mm-hmm. stayed away from it, I think because of some maybe some preconceived notions that I might have, um, yeah, absolutely. which we're going to dive into. But yeah, I'm just, I don't know a lot about it, and I'm always intrigued by things that I don't know a lot about. Um, yeah, that's great. And I think, like I said, I think just men in general, and maybe it's just the men I know, or maybe it's the part of country that I live in. But I think just men, again, have sort of this preconceived notion or, or um, perspective about yoga that, you know, it's, it's only for girls, or it's not manly, oh, yeah. Just, or, yeah, just you know. go out and say it. Yeah, it's feminine. It's not good enough of a workout. It's too spiritual. Yeah. And but all of those things are not true, because I you can go down the list of all the professional athletes in the world and every sport there is, and a lot of them do yoga. It's so beneficial. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and that's a huge reason why other people are doing yoga now. But, um, you know, the, the yoga that these athletes are getting versus like the yoga that you get if you go to a yoga studio and it happens to be full of women or, you know, they're different things. So yoga in the sense of, of fitness is someone could tell me like, hey, I did yoga last week. And my my instant thought is, all right, so did you did you sit in a room for an hour and meditate or did you, were you doing like a really intense um, vinyasa or Mm -hmm. were you doing Bikram yoga where you were, you know, standing in the same spot for 90 minutes, sweating your brains out or so there's, you know, in the same sense that someone says, Hey, I worked out yesterday. um, That's kind of what it's like for yoga because there's just so many different types. Yeah. And that's something that I've learned about, recently within the last year or so my wife has really got into yoga she mm-hmm. um you know going back a couple of years she lost a bunch of weight actually both she and i both did we've kept it wow. off with um diet and some regular exercise but she's really gotten mm-hmm. into yoga and since then i've really learned a lot that it is more than just the cliche you know spiritual you know the oh you know sit with your legs crossed and she right. comes back from her yoga classes and she's just drenched and i'm like my yeah. god what did you do <laughs> and she, yeah, she does vinyasa, like you mentioned, and hot yoga and all these other types of yoga that I really don't know a lot about. But yeah, I mean, yeah. you can, I think guys who consider themselves to be in shape, I think might be surprised with what kind of a workout you can get with yoga. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's kind of how I started doing yoga and why I kept doing it. Uh, my first yoga class was entirely on accident. I was looking for a tailor and I, I went into a yoga studio instead and I was actually on my way to go work out anyways. So I decided to stay and try a yoga workout. It was a Bikram yoga. So that's the 90 minutes, 26 poses, 105 degrees. Um, same thing every time. And it was easily the hardest workout that I've ever done. Like halfway through it, I was, I was pretty much totally exhausted. Um, you know, totally drenched in sweat and I still wasn't even halfway done. Um, and that was why I kept doing yoga because it showed me that despite my my high level of fitness in a bunch of other areas, I was playing lacrosse at the time for Wisconsin. So I was a I was a college athlete, and okay. I was I was 
in every team I've been on, I've kind of been like the guy who's the fitness guy. So I've been the guy who, you know, wins all the sprint drills and, um, and tries the hardest and, um, kind of leads conditioning and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I'm used to being like the strongest guy or like the, if not the strongest guy, at least the one who's willing to push himself the most. And that workout, that yoga workout just showed me that, wow, you're, you're not as strong as you thought you were. <laughs> so, um, and that's why I kept doing it. And I, I got to think that maybe not right away, but soon thereafter you saw, you started seeing some serious results. Am I right? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't really take that long. Um, I'd say that I, I think after a, after a month, I started getting kind of more used to the workouts. Um, and it really was in like that two to three month period that I noticed that I was moving differently. Um, I was still, I was still really, you know, I was still, I don't think I'd lost any weight, but I just felt kind of more nimble. Mm -hmm. I, guess. I kind of felt like I could move more fluidly. Um, I was more aware of my breathing. I was more aware of my body. I was much more flexible. Um, that was, a, you know, that was one, that was one thing that I, that was really noticeable was the flexibility. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was, it was, uh, it was a pretty significant difference, um, from, you know, no yoga and, and after doing just a couple months of it. And that's crazy that you literally stumbled across yoga purely by accident. <laughs> Yeah. And, and at the time that I went into it, like I would, I don't think I, this was 2012 and I don't think I would have gone to, was it 2000? Yeah, it was 2000. No, it was 2011. Sorry. This was 2011. Um, and I don't think I would have gone into a yoga studio at the time. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have planned to go to yoga. Sure. Like it was, it's, I think in, in, the, in that time in 2011 and, 2012 and 2013 even there was this kind of stigma still that yoga was not something that men did and so i never wanted to go to a yoga class it was sure. just kind of something that i was like mm, i'll just do something else and and so yeah I, I i probably would not have gone to that yoga class if not for like accidentally going to it but really glad that i did yeah obviously. Well, that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is because I, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, there are those misconceptions out there. I'm hoping that we can help break them today and kind of educate yeah. uh, some guys on, on the importance of not just physical fitness in general, but how yoga can specifically help in those regards as yeah. well. So mm -hmm. um, I guess before we get too much further, I guess for, for guys who aren't familiar or aren't haven't experienced uh, much in the realm of fitness in general just give a, a super high level overview of what yoga is and then break down man flow yoga in particular what makes man flow yoga different yeah so all right so yoga as it's so yoga is in first off is is a is an ancient philosophy um that goes back to um that goes back to the yoga sutras so yoga when we say you know so yoga is this very old thing, um, and it is a philosophy first and foremost. Um, and you know, it's evolved over time to in the 20th century, um, yoga was actually, um, kind of totally remade in the sense that we took some of the poses from yoga. So we took some of the, there were actually very few poses or there were very few exercises that were part of yoga. Um, and those poses were designed to help you with your meditation. So they weren't actually, you know, fitness oriented at all. They were, they were really more so focused on helping you have the stamina and the breath control, uh, to be able to develop, um, or to be able to work on your yoga practice, which is more so focused on a mental and spiritual, um, and, what it is now, though, is in the 20th century, it became much more of a of a fitness and spiritual thing. So, uh, you know, you kind of get the spiritual experience while you're also getting a workout. Um, and most yoga, as it's practiced now, is based on that vinyasa or the hot yoga that you mentioned at the beginning that your wife does. Um and so it's based on moving, merging your breath with your movement um, and kind of flowing through poses, 
um, going from one pose to the next pose, holding them for five or 10 or maybe 15 seconds at a time. And, um, you know, kind of flowing through things mindfully. Um, and that's the majority of the yoga that you'll see. It's kind of dynamic, flowing, mindful movement that also links elements of uh, spirituality in a sense that you're telling people to um, there's, there's, there's just kind of vague mentions of spirituality that don't actually contribute to a spiritual practice unless you're a yoga instructor and you're, and you're doing it like all the time. Um, so most people just kind of, you know, fake their way into a spiritual practice when they're practicing yoga and they're not that serious about it, I guess. Um, but, uh, so manful yoga is kind of not at all like that. Um, I developed manful yoga because I kind of looked at the yoga world and I was like, that's not something I want to be part of. Um, and that's not really something that's really going to help me with my fitness goals. Because for me, yoga was all about fitness. I wanted to work on, um, I wanted to work on yoga in a way that could help me improve my performance playing sports and help me lift more weight and help me feel better and have more range of motion and have better control for my body. Um, so manful yoga is a 100% fitness focus, more kind of functional yoga uh, that I created because there wasn't a type of yoga like that. And it was, you know, the idea behind that was to create yoga in a way or kind of practice yoga in a way that would appeal more to guys. So and instead of it being like this, the spiritual practice, it was more about, um, instead of this being a spiritual practice, it was much more about working out, um, and doing so in a way that got you maximum results, just like, you know, just like any other workout program would be when you followed it. Um, so it's pretty much what mantle yoga is. And that's kind of versus what traditional yoga is. Okay. Yeah. The, the spiritual aspect of it, I maybe breezed over at the beginning of the show. And, but now that you said that, I think that's probably another aspect of yoga, um, that maybe yeah, it's I a big shied turn away off. from. Yeah. I, I think it is for a lot of people anyway, maybe not for everybody, but yeah, no, definitely not for everybody. Um, um, you know, a lot of, uh, I mean, yeah, for, for some people yoga as it's traditionally practice, I say traditionally, and what I mean traditionally is, as it's being practiced today, traditionally it was practiced totally different from, you know, to, there's sometimes we have this, this weird notion that 2000 years ago, you had an Indian yogi doing a sun salutation at the top of a mountain, which is just total <laughs> because sun salutations were invented in the 20th century. Um, so, you know, this image of what you think that traditional yoga was versus what it actually was is totally different. Like all of the, Yoga movements that you see today are, again, part of it is based on some yoga postures, but actually most of it is based on um, it's Indian martial arts and British gymnastics is what those poses are. Uh, the majority of those poses are come from. That's so, interesting. Indian martial arts. And did you say British gymnastics? I did. Yes. That's crazy. So it was, uh, yeah, so it was developed... Um, it was developed as a form of physical fitness. Um, but the, you know, people, it was, and then yoga, I forgot what his name was, but you know, a yoga guru came to the United States. He came to California and it's, he started teaching. Did he come to Boston? I can't remember which one it was, but he came to the coast and he started teaching yoga and it kind of got popular with, 1950s housewives so hmm. kind of yoga that you know the yoga that we see today in pop culture is based on you know kind of that combination of these movements that are british gymnastics and indian martial arts and some yoga poses um merged with some of the philosophy of what you'll get from yoga but you know it's kind of some people practice yoga as, um, as a, you can't say yoga is not, is, is not a religion, but a lot of elements of yoga are found in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you have a lot of people who, you know, for that reason, 
they are also scared of yoga because they're like, well, I'm Christian. I can't practice yoga. Yeah. And then you also, you know, at the other extreme, you see, you know, every now and then you'll see a, 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 a priest or a, or a, um, you know, a leader of a larger church community say, you know, yoga, everyone who, who does yoga should go to hell because they're worshiping that. I mean, I don't know what, whatever it says, but every now and then you, you know, you get someone who, who does that. And I've even been on some, um, not a podcast, but when I was, um, I was, I followed this, this fitness guy who, I was like, hey, I've I've got this brand called Manful Yoga, and it's all fitness focused yoga, and I think it'd be a really good addition to your blog. And he actually kind of grilled me at first because he was concerned that, as a Christian, he would be, um, you know, being naughty <laughs> somehow or being sinful by doing yoga. And sure. I even had one guy who, who was a brand ambassador, and he is very devout Catholic and eventually after doing yoga for a couple of years, he stopped doing it altogether because he kind of concluded that there was too much pleasure from yoga and it was just blurring the lines of what was spiritually acceptable. And he stopped doing yoga um, because of that, which seems insane to me. So if you have too much fun, you know, that's bad, which whatever, but so yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of misinterpretations of, of it. And there's a lot of, I mean, yoga can be as spiritual as you want it to be, or the, you know, the way that I practice it is no different than if I were to go to the gym and do bench press. So that's kind of how I approach it. Um, but you know, on the other end, you can have people who use yoga as a philosophy and kind of as a guiding, um, you know, as a, as a, as a personal philosophy that kind of guides their life decisions. Yeah. So like many things in life, I think you can, there's a spectrum, right. In terms of how extreme we can take things uh, mm -hmm. on one end of the spectrum is maybe like how you treat yoga where it's just another workout. And the other end is like somebody who literally does treat uh, yoga and maybe the, the historical principles behind it as a form of religion. So, and I think, mm -hmm. I think that is probably I don't know. It's a whole separate discussion as to how dangerous that is or sin, you know, quote unquote sinful it might be. But, um, yeah, that is interesting. I did not know that the origins of yoga like that. So would you say that, um, if you would experience yoga in a, in a yoga studio in the States and then go over to say some European yoga studio, would you have the same experience or is it completely different? Um, in a European yoga studio or anywhere else in the world. Oh, sorry. So, Yoga, I would say that yoga is practiced more traditionally in India and in Indian subcontinent. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And yeah, you, you do get kind of like a different, there's, it's definitely different um, in, you know, in the United States and in Europe versus in India. It's, it's in India, it's much more seen as, because I get message from a lot of Indians too, um, not Native Americans, Indians, right. people who live in India. Um, who will, you know, ask me for, Hey, what's a yoga pose I can use for diabetes or like, what's a yoga pose I can do to, to make my lips smaller. So there are, you know, I get questions like that, which implies that there are a lot of people or which implies that there are a lot of people in India who view this much more as a, as a complete kind of holistic practice. So it's not just yoga is fitness in a way, or yoga is fitness and wellness. Whereas, um, you know, I think in the United States, it's not quite, I don't think, I think the way that's practiced mostly in the United States is not as a complete holistic and wellness practice, but more so is a part of being, um, healthy, I guess. Sure. Sure. Dean, I'm only half serious when I ask this, but if I have big lips and I want to make them smaller, what pose do you recommend? <laughs> is that actually a uh, thing? Um, no, it's not. I would, um, I would actually, I was, I was very yogic when I responded. I said, I would work on accepting your physical features more. <laughs> that was my best answer. That's a good answer. Um, yeah. So, so when we, when we look at, uh, the spectrum of men out there, um, you know, I think that there's a, a big population of men who are fairly sedentary, who don't work out at all 
cardiovascularly mm-hmm. or, you know, in terms of lifting weights, they just don't do anything. They obviously could benefit from something like this, but what tangible benefits could somebody like that on the, somebody in, in that end of the spectrum, um, take away from All yoga? Right. Cool. Now we're, now we're getting into, this is, now we're getting into my area. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, most people, like you just mentioned, are sedentary and, problem with that is that we can't just go straight into a normal fitness program. We can't go from sitting at a desk eight hours a day to doing squats or doing, you know, CrossFit or, or playing basketball and expect that our body will do what it needs to do. And so what yoga does is it helps to get your body back into its natural posture and it helps to kind of address and undo what happens during the day when you are in a seated position. Um, and that's, well, that's just one thing that yoga can do. And that's the type of yoga that I try to, that I create. Mm-hmm. So my programs and my workouts are focused, um, you know, almost exclusively on the person who is uh, either sedentary during the day or who is, you know, or who has a job that requires repetitive movements. So even if they're not necessary, so even if they're not sitting all day, if they're standing at a workstation during the day, mm-hmm. then, you know, uh, there are just certain movements that our bodies need to move well and to feel well, uh, that we aren't getting from a sedentary lifestyle. Uh, and so that's where I like to use yoga to kind of fill the gaps. So you're doing things like working on your hips and working on your core, working on your spine, um, you know, working on your neck and your shoulders, as opposed to going to the gym and, you know, just doing um, Olympic exercises, Mm -hmm. uh, which is great. But the problem with that, and I do recommend everyone lift weights or do some sort of resistance training. But the problem is when you don't have that foundational level of mobility, of proper posture and, and, uh, and proper muscle activation, so using the right muscle groups for specific exercises, when you don't have that solid foundation of fitness, you are incorrectly, most usually you are incorrectly doing those other exercises. So yoga helps you establish that solid foundation of fitness upon which you can build, you know, running, if you want to do running, or if you want to be, you know, if you want to weight train regularly, or if you want to do CrossFit, but you have to first kind of bring your body back from um, sitting at a desk back to kind of its, its natural state. Mm-hmm. That makes it's, total that sense. Make, okay. Yeah, that makes total sense. And I, I can feel that in my own life. Uh, you hit all of the pain points that I have in my own body. You know, I sit at a desk all day and my hips are tight. Uh, mm-hmm. My I've got back issues. My shoulders are kind of rolled in and I've got the computer nerd neck going on. So I... I focus on, you know, when I weight train exercises that will counterbalance that, but I'm hearing what you're saying where like, if my, if I'm not focused on mobility, then my body can't move the way it's supposed to do the way it's supposed to move. And so I'm doing the exercises with my weights incorrectly because my body's not even set up to do it right. Right. So, so in addition, you know, to you doing those exercises that will help you build muscle and help you improve performance, um, you know, and just improve your overall fitness, you have to do something to get your body back from posture all day, right. Mm -hmm. To, to back to, okay, now my chest is, you know, upright. My spine is straight. I can, I don't have pain in my back anymore. My hips are open. So you have to get back to this kind of this homeostasis before you can expect to do other exercises properly without further causing more imbalances um, and developing improper movement patterns that can lead to injury. I know for me personally, um, another reason why I've maybe shied away from yoga is because uh, certain movements, especially, um, you know, hips, hamstrings, where I feel so immobile, I'm mm-hmm. just like, oh, I'm, yoga's not going to do me any good because I can't even get into the right pose. Yeah. And that was, is that, a, is that accurate statement or am I, do I have a, educate me here. Yeah, no, that, that was an issue. Um, so when I first started doing yoga, I felt, you know, I I talked about how I kind of felt out of place 
at the, you know, at some of the yoga studios that I was going to just because of the approach to yoga. But the other aspect of that was I wasn't getting the poses taught to me in a way that worked for my body. So I didn't know how to do the pose that I didn't know how to do the pose in a way that would stretch my muscles the same way it would for a woman who's much flexible than, than I am or someone who'd been practicing yoga for years and years. Mm -hmm. So part of what I do with manful yoga is teaching people the modifications and the different ways of doing yoga or different ways of doing postures that allows them to get the same benefit as people who are flexible and have been doing yoga for a while but without having that same amount of flexibility. So a lot of it is just getting the right modifications. And a lot of most yoga instructors aren't familiar with that, um, or they just don't understand anatomy or fitness enough to be able to instruct that. Yeah. I've got to think that that's pretty common in your typical run, run of the mill yoga studio that you just don't have those people who are um, maybe as qualified or trained as you are in the, when it comes to mobility and the, and the proper poses to help you combat that yeah and and kind of the reason for that is it doesn't take a lot to be qualified as a yoga instructor and there are i mean they still have to go through a 200 hour training but uh most of the training doesn't actually focus on the movement aspect it's much more focused on the the spiritual and the kind of the philosophy behind yoga mm -hmm. so you know um most people aren't attending yoga classes for the, you know, the, the spiritual component of it. Um, or I would say at least in, in most, most yoga studios, I don't think that that's the, that's the goal, but you have yoga instructors who are many who are doing yoga because they like kind of the culture surrounding yoga and it provided, you know, maybe it provided a, Maybe it was a way for them to get out of whatever issues they were experiencing at the time. So a lot of people, you know, a lot of people do yoga instruct, do become yoga instructors because it helped them out of like a particular difficult situation in their life. Mm -hmm. Some aspect of, you know, immersing themselves in fitness or maybe learning more about breathing um, or the philosophy of yoga for whatever reason resonated with them. And that inspired them to become a yoga instructor. But those people might not have you know, as much experience with fitness or movement. And so, you know, you're expecting, you're going to a yoga studio expecting, you know, an expert on movement. And in reality, they haven't, you know, that they, there's not a lot of movement. There's not a lot of ana anatomy um, taught in yoga teacher training, or, you know, um, you're, you're just not going to get the same level of, of knowledge that you would get from, you know, obviously like a physical therapist or someone sure. who, who spent years studying that, but, you know, um, just because they are, you know, they are, they're in a sort of position of authority there. Um, then we might expect those people to, to know more than they actually do. So we've got, um, clear benefits to a sedentary individual who, who, um, takes up yoga. They're going to see, are they going to see improvements sooner than somebody who is already in shape or is it going to take them longer to, to feel uh, the benefits of yoga? No, they would experience it. Um, they would probably experience it sooner. Honestly, if you're yeah. not moving, if you're not exercising right now and you started exercising um, and started doing yoga, you would notice a difference probably in that first week you would notice that, you know, afterwards, well, there, there's a lot of things you notice uh, immediately, but the first would be, you know, your mood, um, your energy, you would also feel better throughout the day. So, you know, your back wouldn't feel, um, as long as you're doing the exercises correctly, then you might not have as much joint pain or joint discomfort. Um, you would have better posture. Um, you would, you might, you probably won't have, you know, an immediately increased, uh, awareness to your breathing, but that will help in over time as well. Um, you'll actually, your digestion will improve, um, when you're exercising and you're, you know, doing a lot of the movements that involve twisting and core work and hip work and yoga that does help improve digestion. So, um, you're probably going to be pooping more than you're used to quite honestly. So, you know, 
if you're doing yoga regularly, regardless of whether you're sedentary and not working out at all, or if you're working out regularly already, within one month, you should notice a significant difference uh, in how you're moving and how you're feeling on a daily basis. And I typically recommend um, in order to notice that difference, doing yoga three times per week, at least 20 minutes per day. Um, you know, and if you can do 35 or 40 minutes per day, that's, you know, it's going to be even better. Um, so my, my typical recommendation is 100 minutes per week. So however you want to break that up, um, 100 minutes per week is going to make a really uh, is, is going to make a huge difference. And, and you will notice that within a month. Sure. And obviously it's a commitment, but I think, uh, as you've demonstrated, there's some, some clear and fairly immediate benefits, um, to individuals who have a uh, sort of a sedentary lifestyle. And you kind of segued into my next question. So we've got guys on the other end of the spectrum who maybe already consider themselves to be in great shape, uh, mm-hmm. or, you know, at least work out semi regularly. And, um, what can somebody like that get out of yoga um, that they might not already be finding in their regular routine of you know weights and maybe some cardio? Yeah, so you're going to get a lot. Uh, you're going to address some. You're going to address some aspects of your fitness that aren't covered by more traditional types of fitness. So, you know, if you're if you're already weightlifting, you're already running, you're already doing cardio. Adding yoga is going to help you work more on mobility. Um, you're going to work more on your flexibility. You're going to be able to work on balance. You'll work on developing isometric strengths. So as opposed to, you know, most, most gym workouts or most cardio is, is, uh, they're dynamic movements, right? They're not, you're, you're doing reps. Whereas a lot of yoga is isometric holds kind of like planks or, you know, doing like a deep squat hold Mm -hmm. or doing a side plank um, or doing a lunge and holding it. So that's a lot of what yoga is. Um, And so when you're doing that, that also helps you develop attention to detail and kind of body awareness and doing that allows you to improve your muscle activation. And that's, that's really helpful for improving your overall strength um, it's helpful for correcting muscular imbalances. So most people have issues with, you know, a lack of glute engagement. So, you know, they can do squats and deadlift all day, but they never feel sore in their glutes it's because they're not using their glutes because they haven't done the right exercises to build that muscular awareness and develop that foundational kind of level of strength so that they're incorporating their glutes into those you know, big lifts that should be using those extra, that should be using those muscles. Um, and that's just one example, but, um, so that's, that's a lot of what, you know, that's, that's briefly, that's, that's what yoga can help do if you're already, and not, uh, not mentioned also, uh, forgot to mention the restorative aspect of yoga. So, you know, just taking time to stretch and recover and lengthen your muscles and, kind of, you know, get out of that fight or flight mode and get into a rest and digest state when your muscles can recover and you can sleep better. Um, you give your testosterone the opportunity to replenish as opposed to, you know, constantly using it to the Mm -hmm. point that you have relatively low testosterone levels. I mentioned, you know, a lot of athletes do yoga and I think you just outlined a lot of reasons as to why that is. It, It sounds like to me, yoga helps take somebody who may be good to great or somebody who's great to, you know, top of their class by tapping into some of the, all the things that you just outlined. Yeah, exactly. By kind of addressing things that they aren't getting from their other workouts, they're, they're kind of addressing those weaknesses that other workouts might not necessarily display. And unless you're doing something like yoga, you're not going to understand that those weaknesses exist uh, in the first place. Mm. I know that the one or two times that I have accompanied my wife to a yoga class, I <laughs> almost every time will definitely discover a, a muscle group that I didn't know existed in my body. <laughs> yeah. And that's a really good sign. Um, I mean, I try to tell people that I try to tell people that, you know, when you encounter something that you can't, you can't do, or that makes your body really sore, that's a good thing, you know, because it, you found something you've basically found an opportunity, an easy way for you to get stronger. And if you're just doing things that like, like, Oh yeah, this is that same soreness that I felt 
you know, for the last year, if you're just doing that over and over again, you're, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of robbing yourself of the opportunity to get stronger. Mm -hmm. So, you know, encountering that, that, that feeling of, Oh, wow, I didn't know I had that muscle is a really good feeling. So it's always really Mm -hmm. good when you find that. Yeah. Uh, not so good in the moment, but it, yeah, definitely pays <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned recovery and I know a lot of guys out there, they, they instantly go to the weights because again, that's kind of the quote unquote manly thing to do. And so guys who are maybe focused on weight training, um, sounds like stretching at the very least is beneficial in terms of recovery, but would you say like a, a light yoga routine after a weight training regimen is beneficial or is that taking it too far? No, I think that's, I think that's fine. Um, I think you should do some restorative cool down. Um, I, I, there is a difference between restorative yoga though, and kind of a, you know, a normal yoga workout. So it wouldn't really make sense for you to go weightlifting and then to finish that off with like a 30 minute endurance focused yoga session. Cause at that point you've already done what you need to do to provoke muscle growth. Um, so there's no point in just further breaking down your muscle at that point, Mm -hmm. unless you're really trying to do endurance training and your goal is to like really build endurance. But for most of us who just want to, you know, build a healthy amount of muscle mass and uh, maybe lose some fat and, and look better, there's really no point in doing, you know, a a lot of intense yoga um, on top of the other workout, but doing some restorative yoga, you know, stuff where you're allowing your muscles to relax and lengthen um, and kind of moving from again, fight or flight mode into rest and digest, then it's extremely beneficial because it helps you recover more quickly. And that's ultimately how you get stronger. It's through your recovery that you get stronger. The workout is just, you know, the workout is, is controlled stress on the body. It's kind of like, you know, you are breaking down the body in a way that will help you get stronger. So it's the recovery that you actually get stronger with. Mm, That's interesting. Well, I'm, that's one thing that I'm not doing correctly right now is I'll typically go hit the weights, you know, over my lunch hour because I just like to be able to get it in during the day and not impact my family time, uh, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, but yeah. that doesn't leave me a lot of time for any kind of recovery. And so I think I'm, I'm really missing an opportunity there. And I suspect a lot of guys out there are as well. Well, you also don't have to do it right after. Um, so, you know, once the kids go to bed, that'd be a really great time to do it. Um, I know f- for me, I don't always... Um, especially recently, I don't find myself finishing a workout and then doing like 20 minutes of yoga afterwards. I'll more so do it kind of in the evening. Okay. Um, the, the important thing is to do, I would say the important thing is to, um, kind of anticipate and prevent soreness. So, you know, make sure that you do a, a decent amount of restorative yoga, you know, before, you're, you, you have that, uh, that, that soreness that you get, you know, 36 hours after mm-hmm. your workout. Okay. So if, so, you know, if you can work out at lunch and then you can do yoga, um, in the evening, that's great too. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. So talk to me about how active versus passive, how do those two play into this and what's the, kind of the difference of those two? So I'll give you a really simple example. Um, and if you're listening to this podcast right now, you can do this yourself. So go ahead and stand on one leg and then I want you to grab one foot, which might not everybody be able to do, but I want you to grab one foot and then I want you to use your hand to extend that leg forward and kind of like hold your leg straight out in front of you or as straight as you can out in front of you. That's passive movement. You're using your hand. You're using an external force to get your leg to lift. Now do the same exact thing but don't use your hand this time. So just use your leg to lift your leg using the strength of your hip and your thigh and lift it as high as you can. That's active. So most of yoga is passive. Most Mm. of yoga involves you, um, involves you using your hand, involves you using the ground or involves you using a wall, um, to stretch a muscle. Um, now what I try to teach is active is a focus on active mobility. So instead of you using your hand or instead of you using the ground to stretch, I'm going to help, I'm going to move, I'm going to make you focus much more on building strength at extended range of motion. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So when it comes to, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, or ask 
when it comes to recovery, again, going back to the example of, you know, maybe a post uh, workout with in the weight room, do you want to focus on active or passive stretching? Passive. Passive. So, so there are, there are two ways to do yoga um, or you can do a combination of the two. But when you're doing yoga for recovery purposes, you want to focus on that passive movement. So it's much more about, you know, allowing, getting the, getting the leg or getting your shoulders or getting your body into a position where you're feeling that stretch mm -hmm. and you're breathing as deeply as you can and allowing that muscle to relax and release so that it can lengthen. And that way, when you start moving around again after that, you know, there's less pressure on the joints. Uh, it's easier to move, you have more range of motion and you can get back to your workout more quickly. But if you're doing yoga to build strength, then you want to work on developing active mobility. So you want to focus on building strength in extended range of motion. So instead of, again, using your hand or the wall or the ground to get there, you want to get into the position so let's say you're getting into a lunge like position, right? So I'm just doing a lunge where I step my leg back. Now I want to get into as deep of a lunge as I can with proper form, but still able to actively move the different parts of my body. So you kind of want to think as you're getting deeper into a yoga pose and doing it in a way to build strength, you want to be able to still exhibit movement or still be able to move your leg or still be able to you know, develop, exhibit strength in that position. So you still want to be able to control it. And if you've moved beyond that point where you're like, oh, I can't move my leg in this position anymore. I just, I'm only here because I'm passively getting here. Then that means that you're not building strength in that position, which isn't to say that it's not useful at all, but it's much more useful. Uh, it's like, well, it actually is a prerequisite for being able to do it actively, but it's much more useful and you're going to notice much more significant results if you can focus on exhibiting strengths in the end range of motion. That was a very long rant. No, that's, that's awesome. I'm learning so much. I'm just taking notes about as fast as I can write over here. <laughs> okay. So is, is it safe to say that active mobility is, a, it sounds like that's a workout in and of itself right there. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're, if you're really pushing yourself and you're doing active mobility, um, it's it, you, you will be sore the next day. And so the challenge that, you know, and this is something that I encounter in my own workouts, but you know, a lot of people will shy away from doing active mobility work because they want to save their strength, so to speak for, you know, their other, um, for their weightlifting or for their more intense workouts. Um, and that's a, that's kind of an easy trap to fall into because, you know, we want to get strong right now. Right. And we want to get the results as quickly as possible. Um, but in reality, you know, if you take off, you know, one or even two resistance training sessions per week and you focus on active mobility, then you're going to improve and get stronger in resistance training much, much more quickly than if you were to avoid that, that active mobility training. That makes sense. Is it possible to integrate resistance into your active mobility routine, like with bands or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, the cool thing about that is once you start practicing it, um, you know, once you start practicing active mobility, uh, in your yoga routines or, you know, on your own, um, you'll start incorporating it into all the other movements that you do. So you'll start noticing that, you know, as you're doing, you know, a lat pull down or something that you're engaging your hips and your core more. Um, or as you're doing pull-ups, maybe you'll notice that, um, you're working more on, you know, strength through the entire rep, as opposed to just squeezing up as high as you can and then coming back down. Man, this is really interesting. Um, before we wind things up, I want to make sure we talk about breathing and I know breathing is a big part of yoga. Sometimes I catch myself breathing real shallow, um, mm -hmm. or with my chest and not my diaphragm. And I think that it, yeah. I, when I catch myself doing that, it's usually when I'm stressed or have like yeah. a lot of anxiety. And so just talk to me how, you know, about different breathing techniques within yoga. Um, what do guys need to know about breathing? Well, 
I think one good thing to know is that the more you practice um, mindful breathing, the more you'll do it subconsciously. Um, so if you can, you know, the more time that you practice mindful breathing and, you know, breathing with your diaphragm, breathing from, you know, your pubic bone all the way up through your sternum, um, the easier it will be throughout the day to, to breathe like that. You won't have to think about it as much. And so when you start to notice that, you know, like you were saying, when you're feeling anxious or you're feeling stressed, you'll check in with your breathing and you'll say, what am I doing with my breathing right now? And you'll notice like, oh crap, I'm only breathing. Like I'm breathing very shallow right now. I'm hunched over in this kind of like, you know, crunched up position. My chest is totally constricted. Um, but the way to develop that mindfulness and awareness of whether or not you are in a good position for breathing starts with practicing it while you're doing yoga. So, you know, and if you're following along to a good routine or a good instructor, then they're going to, you know, kind of constantly reinforce not only the breathing itself, but also keeping your body in a position that is optimal for breathing. So part of it is posture. So getting your body in the right position where your chest is open, where you're not constricting yourself. Uh, and the other part of it is just this mindfulness and attention to breathing, to making sure that you are taking deep, full breaths that you're filling up again, kind of all the way down from the base of your spine, all the way up through your sternum. That's one of the things that I'm taking away from this whole conversation is <clears throat> mindfulness. I've heard you say it over and over and, um, yeah. And having witnessed, you know, some of the things that my wife has done and other little, you know, snippets of other things that I already knew about yoga. I mean, it all kind of makes sense now that, it, and you mentioned this at the beginning of the show that you just become more aware of your whole being, you know, how you move, how you breathe, how you mm -hmm. are positioned. Yeah. And that's why, that's why so many people kind of take yoga and they go beyond to, you know, and they take it beyond, you know, the, the, the workout or the experience that it is. And they apply it to all these other things because a lot of, I mean, and you can do this with anything. If you immerse yourself in something, you know, enough, you'll start to draw parallels between it. So it doesn't matter if it's yoga or if it's football, but, you know, so I can use the phrase, you know, football is a lot like life, or I can say yoga is a lot like life. <laughs> so it's not to say that yoga is special in that sense, um, that you can, apply concepts that you've grown in yoga to other aspects of life. But I think one big thing that, that, that we can all take away from yoga is the attention and mindfulness. And so, you know, when you are more aware of things, that's the first step of, you know, you know, changing and being, being a better version of yourself is first, you know, acknowledging like, Oh, you know, I recognize that I'm doing this not as, not as well as I could be. And I think that I can make this better. But until you start making that better, you have to first recognize, oh, you know, I'm not doing this very well. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where I think mindfulness is really, um, you know, is is really powerful. And it, you know, again, it's not just yoga, but it also translates into, you know, everything that we do. So like if we're in a work situation where maybe we're treating somebody differently than someone else that we treat, you know, maybe we'll notice like, oh, I'm being, you know, kind of quick with this person, or mm -hmm. I'm kind of not letting them, I'm kind of not allowing them to finish speaking. Or, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're out in public or maybe you, maybe you, maybe you hear a story about something and you, you know, your, your kind of your monkey brain jumps to, oh, well, of course that person would do that. And then, you know, the second part of you, the mindful part of you kind of goes like, hey, hey, you know, stop being, stop being, a mm -hmm. you know, you know, let's, let's hear the whole, let's hear the whole story first. Or like, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's not just do what everybody else would, would want us to do. Let's actually come up with a conclusion for ourselves. Um, so I think that's where it translates over into, you know, life in general is, is just stopping to think about things more. Mm -hmm. Um, and practicing that while doing yoga is a really good way to do that. Yeah. And it's probably a time to kind of reflect on all that as well as kind of, as you get kind of lost inside yourself and your thoughts. Yeah, um, absolutely. Dean, these are powerful thoughts. Um, and my wheels are just spinning right now when we talk about, um, mindfulness and, you know, th this whole show is really dedicated to guys who want to equip themselves to be better, uh, mm -hmm. men, better fathers, better husbands. 
Yeah. Uh, just better people in general. And so the more that we can do to grow ourselves and become better tomorrow than we were today, I think that's a good thing to integrate into our lives. And it sounds to me like yoga could be a really valuable tool in that toolbox when it comes to developing ourselves as leaders, as people, um, not just in our families, mm -hmm. but just out in the general public. Yeah, absolutely. And I should have said this at the beginning, but, um, you know, we have tons of dads, um, in our, in our community. Um, you know, some of the questions that come up a lot, like last week is, Hey, busy, busy dads. When do, when's the best time to do yoga? You know, so we had guys talking about like, you know, well, I do mine in the morning before they wake up, or I do mine in the evening once the kids have been put to sleep, or, you know, I have my kids do yoga with me, or they just, they kind of watch and make fun of me while I'm, while I'm struggling through the poses. Um, so, you know, we, we've got a ton of dads who are, who recognize that this is something that can, you know, help them stay fit, but also, you know, hopefully make them better dads in the process. Absolutely. Amen, man. Well, Dean, I'm excited to give yoga another shot. I've, I've kind of shied away from it for years, but you've really, I think you've kind of opened my eyes to a lot of what yoga can do in all aspects of my life. I, hopefully a lot of guys out there are taking away a lot of information from this episode. Um, I know you've got a lot going on, Dean. Can you kind of give us a, an overview of how we can find you, how guys can find you and, and what you've got going on out there? Sure. Um, so my main platform is my website and that's where I have, you know, all of my workouts, all of my, all my structured workout programs, all of my videos that I record, um, and our, our Manful Yoga community is all kind of through my website at manfulyoga.com. We have a, a really dynamic kind of amazing members area that we've built there that hosts all that content. Um, so that's kind of where you can follow a structured program and, and follow along to videos that you, you know, press play and just follow along. Um, but I've also done a lot of other stuff. So, you know, I published a book in May called yoga fitness for men through DK publishing. I put out DVDs on Amazon. Um, yoga boost is our, is our kind of our main DVD. And that's usually in the top five or top 10 in exercise and fitness on Amazon, uh, competing with Jillian Michaels and, you know, other, other fitness people like that. Um, and that's, that's probably, you know, the best way to get started. I do have a free seven day intro through my website. So if you go to manfulyoga.com slash intro, um, you know, we have lessons there that kind of show you how can I make yoga part of what I do, or how can I understand yoga in a way that's relevant to the challenges that I face on a daily basis. So like improving your posture or relieving back pain or strengthening your core, um, or, you know, quick, efficient workouts that you can do with minimal time. So like that kind of thing. Outstanding. Well, again, manflowyoga.com. Check it out. Dean is a leader in his field and yoga is not just for the women. So get out there, check it out and, and do what you can to improve yourself, improve your life. Dean, one final question I do have for you mm -hmm. is, and I ask all my guests, you're ready. <laughs> I'm ready for it. What is your definition of an inspired legacy? Well, I have an, I, actually, I had a question for you. Oh, yeah. So when you say inspired legacy, does that mean that your legacy that you're living is being inspired by other people or by other examples? Or does it mean that you're living a legacy that inspires other people? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All of the above. Uh, yeah. This, this, the answer to this question for me could probably be, and probably should be and will be a, a separate episode at some point in the future, but yeah, inspired. I mean, we all know what legacy means. Um, yeah. and we traditionally think of legacy as, you know, you're leaving something behind for your kids in the form mm -hmm. of a monetary gift, you know, and that's nice. But yeah. I think that more importantly, a legacy that we can leave our kids and our families are, you know, the ability to show love and be loved, mm -hmm. um, to be content with who you are and what you have in life. And that's not to say that acquiring things and money isn't, that's not a bad thing, um, but it's not the most important thing. And so yeah. teaching uh, your kids, especially to, to just be content and find contentness in themselves. And um, mm -hmm. that's, that's an important aspect of it. But inspired, the inspired side of the coin is um, quite honestly, it's biblically uh, focused. 
Um, mm-hmm. you know, our vision is to change the world one dad at a time. And, and we do this through, um, you know, celebrating fatherhood, equipping men to lead and to love mm-hmm. unconditionally and to ultimately leave a legacy of no regrets. And we do all of this through a lot of biblical principles when it comes to not just parenthood, but just leadership in general. Um, you know, the, mm-hmm. the famous uh, acronym that's out there is, you know, the Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. And it's really true. There's so much, whether you believe about the risen Christ or not, there's so much practical wisdom that's, that anybody can apply to their life that ex- lives in the Bible that um, we, we we really hold that up as, as our um, path, mm-hmm. so to speak. And so for me, kind of, make this answer short and sweet. Um, the inspired really has to do with what the Bible has to say about our roles as fathers, but your, your, your answer can come from a different, totally different perspective. That's the beauty of asking all my guests. And I'm glad that my answer is different from yours because now it doesn't, I can't be accused of cheating. Um, so this is, this is kind of something that I've tried to answer, you know, and, and, um, a lot, um, you know, I try to sit down and I just write this kind of stuff out. So I do spend time kind of coming up with this and it comes down to, it kind of comes down to developing a personal philosophy for yourself. Um, but an inspired legacy to me means that you are observing and you're, you're, you, you've observed and you've analyzed and you've taken into account the lessons and, the practices of the people who have come before you of the, you know, the, the, the most successful or not necessarily the most successful in the sense of business or, um, you know, business or, 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 or social recognition, but, you know, the, the taking the best practices from those who have come before you and implementing those in, in, in your own life um, and, living your life in a way that that adheres to a personal philosophy that you've developed that is based on universal principles. And that is something uh, that can serve to inspire those who come after you and people who you want to, you know, live, live their lives in a way that helps to improve the lives of other people. Um, So for me, um, and I actually thought about this at some point of, of getting a tattoo that said like, live your legacy or something along those lines. And then I found out that live your legacy now is like this already, this other movement. So I can't do that because then <laughs> I'd be accused of being part of this other thing. Well, I'll send but, you my logo and you can get it tattooed on your arm. Perfect. <laughs> I, I, I hope that you pay for it too, at that point. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for, for, for me, um, it, it's very much about having a personal philosophy for yourself and being very clear um, or being consistent in your actions in a way that, that is that your actions are based on that personal philosophy. Um, And I guess mostly just being consistent with it Um, and, you know, doing what you think is right, regardless of whether or not certain groups of people uh, think that's, the right thing to do. Um, and, you know, hopefully living your life in a way that inspires those who come after you to dedicate their lives, not to, you know, not just to themselves, but, but more so to looking at the world and think, figuring out, okay, how do we, you know, how do I either make this world a better place? You know, as cliche as that sounds, you know, what solutions can I provide? Um, or, you know, how can I make this world a more beautiful place? Or what can I do to kind of bring my version of beauty into the world? So, um, I love there's, it, my, there's my range of an answer for you. No, I love it. I love it. And I love hearing everybody's <clears throat> unique spin or take on the question. It's every, every answer has been a little bit different. And, um, yeah, that's, that's an acceptable answer. I love it. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Mark. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Dean. I know I did, and I learned a ton about yoga. And I hope you guys will join me in, you know, really getting after it and incorporating yoga into your workout routine. I think the what little I've tried it so far, I've I've noticed the difference, and I know that you guys will as well. So look Dean up online, Manflow Yoga. Give it a shot. I think you'll really appreciate it. Guys, if you took anything away from this episode, again, 
do three things for me. Would you please subscribe to this podcast, leave a positive review in iTunes, and then go ahead and tag Dean on Instagram. Um, let him know what you thought of this and let him know what you took away from it. Again, he is at Manflow Yoga on Instagram. He's really active there. So anything that you post and tag uh, tag him with, he's going to see that and he's going to really appreciate it. And it's going to help us get the message out about this uh, episode in particular to his audience on Instagram. If you'd like to follow the show as a whole online, you guys can visit theinspiredlegacy.com and there you're going to find links to our Instagram and Facebook pages. And if you guys are looking to keep your axe sharp by surrounding yourself with other like-minded dads, I just want to invite you to join our free and private Facebook group. You're going to find encouragement there, support, accountability, spiritual growth, and there's a link to that group in the show notes of this episode. Again, I want to thank you guys for listening. Remember, subscribe, leave a review, and share this message because I really do believe that when we all work together to lift up fatherhood, we're going to change the world one dad at a time. Until next time, live inspired. Live inspired.